Kelsey, if you want to do roll call, please. Yes. Mr. Torpy? Here. Mr. Glasner? Here. Ms. Perez? Present. Mr. Day? Present. Mr. Locklear? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I will move on to the approval of the meeting minutes. We have three sets of minutes to approve. We've got first March 8th. It's in your packet. If everyone has a chance to review, if someone wants to move. Can we do this as a batch? We can do them all. Okay. Take a moment to review. We've got um, March 8th, April 5th, and April 12th. to approve all the sets of minutes. I'll second that. All in, uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Meetings, meeting minutes are approved. All right, now we will move on to our special presentation this evening. We are very honored and happy to have Freedom 7 Elementary here to talk about um, their project, their exhibition project for this year. Um, and we're going to just give the floor over to you guys. Um, your presentation is on that laptop there. I believe that you have to click through to go through your slides. There is no clicker, so someone's going to have to man the laptop up there. So whoever wants to begin, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Tia. I'm Kevin. And I'm Avely. We are sixth grade students at Freedom 7 Elementary. Our theme for this year's exhibition is Mission Possible. We chose this because the SDGs are seemingly impossible challenges that we know we can achieve. This is why our slogan is to make the impossible possible. We are representing SDG 3, good health and well-being. Health is a huge problem. And at Freedom 7, we are trying to provide a better environment for our generation and the generations to come. To help, we took, we took three levels of action, all for different audiences. We will be telling you about our level three actions. For my level three action, I went to my local Publix and I handed out painted rocks that had images, uh, that had little images representing the targets for SDG3, the indicators on the back, the targets the targets themselves and facts that represent that and go into the indicators and targets. For my level three action, I created a website which was about the SDGs, the UN, and how to help. I posted this website on different social media platforms. For my level three actions, I made soaps with facts in them to spread awareness about SDG three. I give them out at the beach. There are a lot of things that you can do to take action too. Some ways you can take action are by spreading awareness and or volunteering. You can also come up with new ways to make action. Thanks for giving us your time today. We hope you learned a lot about, we, we hope you learned about SDG3. We are SDG3, SDG3 good, good health and well being. I'm Jackson. We are yeah. SDG for quality education. We took three levels of action. We level three action is spreading awareness through our community independently. For our level two action, we we went to Bright Horizons Academy and read to kids. We read BU Brain School Magnificent Things and Nine F Lollipops. For my level three, I gave away, I gave away madness that stayed at CG4. And on a separate piece of paper, I stated why education is so important. For my level two action, I went to the DOC, which is an organization that helps kids get better education. And for my level three action, I created a lending library at the DOC so kids who didn't have books could take them home to read. 
action, taking action, taking action is to help people who don't have an education get an education. We, we can take action and promote life for all segments of society. SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation. Did you know that the United Nations says that, uh, that on average, women and girls worldwide spend approximately 200 million hours per day collecting water? Added up, that's over 22,800 years. It would be as if I started with an empty bucket in the Stone Age and didn't arrive home until, 20, until 2016. Uh, SDG 6's goal is to solve the global issue of people not having access to clean water and sanitation. And although it might sound impossible, there are ways we can help. Some ways to spread awareness and take action are tell people about what you know about water scarcity, properly dispose of harmful products, prepare a presentation for your watershed, about, about your watershed for your school or organization, or volunteer and donate in your community. My team, the Quadroplets, took three different levels of action, and one of them in our school, and two of them in our community. The ones we did in our community were at level two and level three action. For our level two action, we volunteered in an organization named Air Mobile Ministries. This organization was started by Joe Hurston, who flies around the world with his water purifiers in a plane called the Little Donkey. And his water purifiers have multiple filters to filter through any type of bacterial, wa bacterial water to make it clean again. And after, th after this, I got to do my level three action, which was in, which was my friend and I got to go to a beach cleanup and we had a QR code that people could scan to tell, to tell them about our website and tell them all about our SDG and why it's important to save all of our clean water. And here are some pictures. This is from our level two action, and this is the water purifiers. And this is on my level three. And thank you for listening. I hope you learned about clean water and sanitation. here today representing SDG 11 Sustainable Cities and Communities. There are three different actions that we took about our SDG called the Levels of Action. So we t for one of our actions that we took, we volunteered in a community and with an existing organization and we did this with Keep Brevard Beautiful and we did a beach cleanup in Melbourne Beach to help pick up the trash that harms our oceans. And we also picked up a lot of trash in the streets because that, because of the wind blows that trash into the ocean, which is harder to pick up. For another level of action, we did <clears throat> our own actions and we split up to do this. And for my action that I took, I did a website that I created and I made a QR code for this website, and I put it on a flyer in multiple different stores in my community on how to help spread awareness about SDG 11. And for my level three action, I presented the Satellite Beach City Council on possible EV charge locations and grant opportunities to help fund them. We are SDG 11, Clean City Crew. We thank you for your time. Southern Elementary representing SDG 13 climate action. Climate change is more than just 
is more is hurting more than just the climate. It's affecting our oceans, marine life, carbon emissions, animals, and us. To begin, climate change is the long-term shift in weather patterns and temperatures of the Earth and its surface. Climate change puts many things at risk, such as the economy, health, infrastructure, and, the, and mainly the environment. Climate change melts the cryosphere, which is the Earth's sphere of ice. When it melts, it creates sea level rise, leading to floods and more common and severe natural disasters, which damages buildings and homes, leading us to replace the broken infrastructure with money that some people will not be able to afford and leaving some people with no homes. Due to the rising temperature, which changes environments of animals, animals are either expanding and becoming invasive species or shrinking their territory due to climate change, causing them to compete with more animals and not being able to find enough food. Many animals go into extinction or have an overall hard time surviving. In fact, species of climate change states that there are at least 10,967 species on the brink of extinction because of climate change. As the environments change, some animals will be able to adapt by changing their physical and behavioral features, while some will not, such as amphibians and reptiles. Climate change impacts on ecosystem states. Climate controls how plants grow, how animals behave, which organisms thrive, and how they all interact with the physical environment. Without our climate, the Earth would be pretty much an icy wasteland. On top of that, we wouldn't have clean air, safe drinking water, secure shelter, or sufficient food. This is mainly due to unwanted greenhouse gases, such as methane, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and excessive water vapor. Greenhouse gas emissions are gases made by human activity and released in the production of goods and services that otherwise wouldn't happen if we used green products. Green products are eco-friendly items that are made in a sustainable process with little to no unhealthy emissions. I took action to prevent climate change by making door hangers about climate change and easy ways that people could help, such as reducing water waste and eating the food you buy. You can take action against climate change too. Here are a few easy ways. One, you can reduce your impact on the environment by reducing your amount of trash. You can reuse things that may be broken or that can sustain another use. You can also recycle something as simple as a plastic water bottle. Also, actually eat the food you buy. Because 10% of US energy goes into growing, processing, packaging, and shipping food, 40% of which ends up in the landfill. And when food's in the landfill, it releases methane, which is responsible for 30% of climate change. Also, you can unplug things that you don't use and things that are fully charged. Finally, educate others so that you're not the only one trying to help with climate change. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sean V, and the SDG that I chose to study was the Sustainable Development Goal, Life Below Water. Life Below Water aims to conserve and sustainably use our oceans for sustainable development. This means for this goal to be achieved, we'll have to significantly reduce plastic use and end overfishing. Over 100 million sea creatures die each year from plastic pollution alone, and this needs to stop, which is why we decided to take action to help this issue. We took three levels of action. For one of our levels of action, we volunteered at the Marine Research Council. At the Marine Research Council, or MRC, we planted mangroves in the Banana River to help purify the water and provide a habitat for marine animals. Next, for another level of action, we took action individually. I partnered with my friend Jaden to create beach cleanup stations and put them around different cocoa beach beaches. These stations had buckets and grabbers to help people easily clean the beach and had QR codes to the UN website so that we could spread awareness on the SDGs. There are also a lot of easy things that you guys can do to help the ocean. First, you should start by reducing your carbon footprint, stop using single-use plastics, um, donate to a reliable charity, and go on beach cleanups. Thank you. Hello, I'm Anthony Nader, and I chose to research Sustainable Development Goal 15, Life on Land. I chose to research SDG 15 because I'm from Lebanon, which is a beautiful country in the Middle East where there are spectacular mountains, forests, and one-of-a-kind nature, 
And also, Lebanon goes through the climate changes of all four seasons. But because they're unsustainable and not, don't recycle, these can lead to forest fires and deforestation. I chose this SDG to spread awareness about this issue and save our beautiful ecosystems. To, our focus is on the challenges we face in achieving this goal, such as deforestation and climate change, and the loss of biodiversity. We have researched various solutions and initiatives that individuals and communities can adopt to address these issues and create a positive impact. We hope to inspire and motivate others to take action towards protecting and preserving our natural resources. By working together, we can create a more sustainable future for our planet and all its inhabitants. We understand the importance of protecting our environment and ensuring a sustainable future for future generations. Through our project, we hope to raise awareness about this goal and the critical role it plays in preserving our environment. So I took action by first uh, cleaning up. I attended Trash Bash at Memorial Park at Paradise Beach, made by Keep Rivard Beautiful, and cleaned up the environment so the animals don't choke on the plastic. And next, for my level three action, I created a kid's menu for my cousin's restaurant with a crossword and a word search on the back that each had facts about our SDG so kids can learn how to save life on land by first starting to build knowledge about this issue and take it as a habit to help save our ecosystems. You can take action by first not using products tested on animals, not using pesticides and insecticides, cleaning up local parks, donating to charities you trust, and composting. Thank you for your time. Josh and I'm Keegan and we are represent oh and we are representing SDG 16 peace justice and strong institutions which works towards getting a peace which works towards getting more peaceful just and inclusive societies we have done three different actions in the community to show how to complete SDG 16 one in our school and two in the community for our first action we had to take action in our school for our first level of action, we handed out different flowers to di to each class in hopes that they would grow their grow the flowers, and then we after a month we would collect them. The two flowers that we gave out were sunflowers, which are the flower of Ukraine, and poppies, which represent peace. Altogether, we were gonna make a, we made a garden with this, which represented peace for Ukraine and the whole world. For our second level of action, we chose to create pamphlets about our SDG. These pamphlets included facts, pictures, and ways you can help regarding our SDG. We gave out these pamphlets at a lawyer's office. Right before, we watched Traffic Court to learn how our government works to keep our roads safe and also to see a safe and just institution at its work. For our level three actions, we each had to take action in our community. For my level three action, I created yard signs. These yard signs had two QR codes on them. One QR code directed pedestrians to, an to a website where they could learn about SDG 16. The other QR code directed pedestrians to a website to donate to international law enforcement. And for my level three action, I made a video where I explained SDG 16 and ways people could help while drawing a meaningful picture that represented peace and posted it on social media. We took action because these problems continue to persist. And it, but if we take action, we might be able to stop them. You can take action by supporting the police, spreading the awareness about the importance of SDG 16, and donating to places that align with the targets and goals of SDG 16. Now, how will you take action? Go a day without fighting a sibling or donate? Thank you. Hello, I'm Mila, and I'm here representing SDG 17, Partners for the Goals. We have three levels of action to do, level one action, level two action, and level three action. For my level two action, I worked with Ms. Smack uh, from the Sustainability Committee to plant dune sunflowers and sea oats on our beaches. 
For my level three action, I decided to help raise awareness about all of the different SDGs because uh, in my research, I came across that because of COVID-19, the 2030 agenda for the SDGs might even seem impossible. And I thought, well, why not make that possible? So I decided to help raise awareness about all of the SDGs by making a song and posting it to BandLab. The ways that I found that people can take action are by helping in local sustainability events, uh, donating to some charities, finding their own way to create and take action. Even just the smallest things can go a long way. So therefore, I would like to thank everybody in this room for not just listening to my own presentation, but listening to my fellow classmates and my friends' presentations. So thank you. Thank you guys, first of all. Um, does anyone on the committee have questions for the students? Obviously these, you know, these folks have been busy and working hard on their, on, their, on their projects and truly appreciate all the action you've taken and keep on, keep on keeping on. So you're doing well, thank you. You know, we all have to miss some meetings. Sometimes we don't get to, get to every meeting, but I would not, this is the third year for this and I would not miss this. This is really, <laughs> Very well done and, and, and very interesting. I thank you for presenting. We, I, look, we look forward to seeing next year's projects. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, the amount of effort you put into this, just seeing the, uh, your, the knowledge you gained through <laughs> studying each topic. I have one question. I missed it in the beginning. What does the acronym SDG stand for? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I must have missed it. I, what is that? Unicef. Uh, you. <laughs> okay. Sustainable Development Goal. Thank you. Okay. I, was, I knew it was sustainable. I couldn't figure out the two second letter. Thank you. Great job. Excellent. Okay. We want to thank you again. It was very impressive. We're so excited to see all of the good work you guys will continue to do for sustainability. And we, again, thank you for being here and telling us about your projects. And please feel free to volunteer to be on this committee <laughs> when the time comes. On behalf of Freedom Seven, thank you for having us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to move on from our special presentation on to staff reports. This is the portion of our meeting that is It's a business official meeting, you guys are welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> You're welcome to stay. To stay. You, you can walk. stay if you would like. <laughs> Put it last next year. All right. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, so I actually have quite a few updates for you guys. It has been a very busy month, all very good things. So to start, um, last year this committee made a recommendation to the commission to adopt resolution 2022-21, banning styrofoam and single-use plastics at events held on city property. That went into effect on it. April 27th. You can leave it open. You can leave it it's open. It's fine. Yeah. All good. Yes. You're fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that went into effect on April 22nd of this year. So just a couple weeks ago, that was Earth Day. Um, so our fire marshal is communicating this information to all the food trucks who operate within city parks and things at events. And then this is also on the special events permit and is being communicated at special events meetings to those applicants as well. So that is how we're kind of getting the word out there and how it's being enforced. Good. Um, any questions about, feel so free to stop it, me whenever. So is it already banned? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. not like giving them a grace period of two weeks or 
finished so out their was, supplies? It was adopted in November of last year, right. and okay. then they had a, I think it was six months. Okay. <clears throat> right. um, okay. So you all know that the State Sustainability Award was awarded to Ms. Roselip. She was presented the award April 25th at the commission meeting. Um, Jim, do you want to say anything about that? You were the one that... Um, no, she, she seemed to be quite happy about it, and it was... Uh, I, <laughs> It was, it was a good thing. I think the commission liked it too, since they they proved it in advance, obviously. So it was, yeah. it was a good thing. Bob, give it Jim a gets an attaboy for doing a great presentation. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so now I'm going to move on to a bunch of the events that we had or things that we've been up to the past several weeks. So we had our Earth Day tree giveaway. We held a workshop on Earth Day to teach people how to plant and take care of their trees. There was about 20 people that attended. Pretty well attended and very enthusiastic people to get their trees and learn how to plant them. Um, we had about 160 trees total provided by the Florida Forest Service and Pelican Island Audubon Society. And then um, we gave a majority of them away through the events and the drive throughs but we still have about 50 trees that need good homes. So if you know anybody that would like a tree or if anybody's listening, call the city. We would be happy to give you a tree what to plant in your garden. They would pick them up at Public Works. Is that? Yes, but they have to let me know ahead of time. You can't come unannounced. So please call. What? What type of trees do you have? Um, yes. Yeah, so left, I have holly, sea grape, green buttonwood, soapberry, oak, and mahogany. Okay. So we have. Can you plant those on the grape. island? Yeah, all of them are friendly to this area. I wouldn't plant some of them directly on the beach, but. Well, I'm saying like if there's leftovers and nobody's taking them. He's doing all those projects by the Thousand Islands. If you took them and put them well, on Thousand that's, Islands, that's one of the things we've talked about. In fact, the, I think the Lutheran Church has talked about doing taking some for their property and put some out on the Thousand Islands and other locations as appropriate. Yes. Are, are they going to put out the word that they still have some left over? Yes, we're going to put this out um, probably this week or early next week. <coughs> yes, but just if you want a tree, come get it while we still have it. Um, okay. Streets. Next up, we have been doing a lot of work on our Living Shoreline project. Um, Jim and Bob were so wonderful to um, come out of the last minute to help us when we were a little shorthanded. So we deployed a bunch of live oysters on the Living Shoreline site last week. So we deployed about 1,700 adult oysters, which are about the size of your palm, and then about 20,000 <coughs> small baby oyster spat. So this is about a third of the oysters that we expect to be deployed on the shoreline. So there's going to be literally thousands of oysters out there filtering that water. Um, so the University of Central Florida will be monitoring that for us so that we can see how it's progressing, if things are growing, you know, um, if we're seeing new oysters come into the area, they'll document all of that for us. So we'll be putting more out there coming soon. So there's well, the, go ahead. the university is going to give it, get that info back to us on a periodic basis or? Okay. Yes, so I have some of that information for you now. So they're, um, gonna, they're gonna like tell like, hey, we put out this many or well, this many died? We, so the city, we're putting them out, but they're just monitoring and documenting how it's doing. So it's important sometimes when you do restoration projects to have a third party kind of um, monitor so that it doesn't, you know, it's okay to monitor it yourself, but sometimes it's good to have an outside party monitor it to show you how it's doing without a bias. Um, so the way that they monitor is they'll come back in a month and do a one month monitoring, and then they'll do monitoring at three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months, and then they'll continue for two years on that like kind of three month cycle. Um, but they've already started monitoring the plants out there for us because we have mangroves and spartina. So I was gonna share that information with you guys tonight too, because I just got a report from them today. Um, so we have several sections of plants. So um, we have an, the northern section of mangroves, we're seeing about 81% survival with a total loss of only nine plants. There was 48 total plants planted in that section. So it's pretty good. Um, only nine have eaten, or, you know, not made it. So um, the south section of mangroves has seen a 94.4% survival with only a loss of one plant. And there's 37 total plants in that area. And then the Spartina, which is planted in the center section, has seen as 98.4% survival with a loss of only one plant. So um, this is pretty good. The majority of these plants were installed in December. So this is the, what month would that be? 
the three-month monitoring, I think, is what we got for those, and then the 81% survival that I mentioned for the mangroves, those were installed in July of last year. So it's almost been a year, and things are looking pretty good out there as well as, as far as the plants go. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend. I've been traveling a lot, but out of curiosity, it'd be helpful if we had a map where these things were going. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to go look at it and just to... Yeah, so yeah, this whole also, project is just at McNabb Park. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Co Co so there's Park like three the sections of oh, okay. Park. All right. Yeah, so they're all in one area. They just monitor them. Oh, okay. So I didn't know they were spread out all over. Okay. Did I understand that one third, you're one third done? There's With the oysters? Yeah. So all of, most of the plants are in. I would right. say probably 75% of the plants are in. Right. And then oysters were about one third of the way done. So there's going to be two more sessions of oyster. Okay. At least. Okay. Yes. <laughs> There's oysters. Um, uh, uh, they put them in shallow water. Uh, how deep is it? There at the park. Yeah. Um, it can it can be anywhere from about two and a half to four feet, depending on yeah. time of year. Okay. But the way it, that they were deployed deep, so is there's like a base layer, so they're elevated off the bottom, so they're not sitting on the bottom. Okay. So they're in optimal growth range. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. They're in gabion, so they. Oh. Okay. And, and, and you put some. Some right there, and then some across the way. Uh, yes. Right. Do you guys want like a whole presentation about this at the next meeting? Uh, you want some more information? Yeah, I would like. All we right. Can, we okay. can go out there and sit around the table Please around the trees. <laughs> we could. We could meet at the park and do it. Or is that an official? We can do that. Is there other cities doing the same stuff? Um. Like so Aaron yeah. Rhode Island, Cocoa. I mean, Cape Canaveral. Yeah. Tidesville. So there are other cities doing living shorelines projects like this. I know Satellite Beach did a living shoreline out at Samson's Island, and I think Titusville has done a couple planted areas. Um, so there's other people doing them, but I think the leader in shoreline restoration right now in Brevard County is probably the Brevard Zoo. They do a lot of restoration mm -hmm. as far as oysters go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll give you guys some pictures and some more information at the next meeting to help put it into perspective for you. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> so that wraps up the living shoreline. <laughs> Next up is uh, we did a seagrass planting mm -hmm. yesterday okay. in the South Thousand Islands with the Brevard Zoo, St. John's, and the National Estuary Program. So we planted two different seagrass plots that are right next to each other, um, but that was 100 planting units in each plot, so 200 total seagrass planting units. And when I say a planting unit, that's a, anywhere between 7 to 15 kind of Sprouts. blades of grass that were planted, they're tied to a staple, and then they're put into the ground so that they don't just drift away. So the zoo will be going out there and doing that monitoring um, on their monitoring schedule. I don't know what that monitoring schedule is, but lots of restoration going on right now. So, so mm -hmm. do, they, do they put a screen or something up yeah. so that it doesn't get eaten immediately? By... So some of them have manatee exclusion devices and yeah. some of it doesn't. I think okay. they're testing okay. the differences, but some of Where them have to do that. Um, it's in the South Thousand Islands, kind of like the southwestern area. You know where Tire City is? Yeah. <laughs> right next to Tire City. Okay. Oh, it's around the corner from Tire City. It's in that, that big open ch channel, that goes, bay that goes in almost right to the 500 PVC channel. Pipes? Yes. And they're going to have a sign out there eventually. <clears throat> Their sign was just too short yesterday. Do they test the soil of the, the bottom to make sure that it can actually grow in it? Yeah, they're testing a bunch of different, they were taking vials and samples and they're testing water clarity along with the planting. So they have a bunch of water quality <coughs> sensors around as well. So how, do they know of right now, can the seagrass grow and survive in the water that we have now? So what I can tell you is when we were out there, there was rubia, which is seagrass, but they were planting haladuli. So there's, rubia was present in the planting area. So there's seagrass. haladuli in the area, not much, but there is some still around. Yes, so seagrass is here. They're um, doing similar to the clams where they're testing a bunch of different sites to see, you know, what is the feasibility of planting halidouli at this point. All right, any more questions about the seagrass? Okay, awesome. The next thing is um, we installed some educational informational signage at Fisher Park and Shepherd Park covering sea turtles and, you know, to keep our beaches dark, clean, um, and not to mess with the sea turtles as they're nesting or as they're emerging from the nest. Um, so that's at Fisher Park and Shepherd Park, like I said, and those were provided by the Sea Turtle Conservancy. And then sticking on the topic of sea turtles, 
Um, we're going to have our next sea turtle lighting survey completed within the next two weeks. So I should have a report for you guys to see, um, hopefully by the next meeting, once I get that back from the contractor. Um, but to give you an idea of kind of where we are since the last report we had done last year, we, if you remember, we sent out 36 total notice letters to properties letting them know that there was some type of lighting concern that we needed to address. 15 of those properties have personally reached out to me to try to schedule either a site visit or talk through solutions. So that's about 41% of them I know are actively working on making improvements. Um, a lot of the issues they're running into is supply chain. These lights are difficult to obtain and it can take them, you know, after they order them months to get them. So as well as, you know, costs on top of all of that. But I know that they're in the process of working on making these updates, which is really nice and refreshing to hear. Um, and then the last thing that I have for you guys is since this committee kind of made the community garden several years ago, um, I wanted to let you all know that they'll be adding two additional garden beds for a total of 19. There are currently over 20 people on the waiting list, so we're adding two to hopefully bring two people off the waiting list and let them enjoy the garden. So they're going to be building those garden beds this Saturday at 9 a.m. at the community garden. If anybody is looking for something to do on Saturday, I'm sure they would love an extra set of hands. And that's all I have. Thank you, Kelsey. Good stuff. Okay, then we will move on to old business. Let me ask one quick question yes. here. I know a while back we talked about there was talk of adding another site on one of the other parks. Is there any 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 movement on that? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, so I submitted that as um, a budget item for FY24. Okay. So it's in there if it yeah, sticks. Okay. Good enough. Yes, if it's approved. Thank you. Okay. All right, old business. Let's talk about the Sustainability Awards Program. <laughs> How do we think it went? What do we have ideas for next year? And any changes or updates we'd like to make? I, I, I'd like to start by saying I was really pleased that there were four applicants for nominations. Right? I think that was, yeah. that's very encouraging that people were interested enough to do that. So that's yep. When we submit our results, they all just go in at one time. Like, and it just, she just calculates the numbers. It's not like where each person gives out their own score. So we hand in the form. Yeah. Kelsey puts all the numbers in. And, and then this is what up it on is. The, on the Correct. screen. That's why it's anonymous. Uh, uh, anonymous. Is that something you want to do, like, at a meeting? Or do you just want to, like, email me this, the information? Just give it to you. And then, when, like, do, like, oh, I mean... Like, do you want to display it on a screen, or do you want to just email it to me, and then I'll let you know? Here's what it, what the results were. Yeah, whatever is easiest for you. I mean, I don't have a problem emailing and scanning yeah. it, um, or we just give them, you know, at one meeting, we just turn them in, and then you have them ready for the next meeting, <coughs> or however that goes. I would suggest as part of that, I'm not I'm not opposed to having the, you know, be anonymous and having it submitted via email or whatever. But uh, I think having a dis having a discussion in, amongst ourselves here of, a, of when they've been once they've been submitted and then ranking them, you know, submitting your ranking shortly thereafter would be a fine, a good process, I think. Because I think uh, you know it's it's worthwhile to hear other people's thoughts on the thing that you might. I, I didn't network. think of that. That's a great point. Yeah, exactly. You might you might raise things that others didn't see or you know and that sort of thing. So. Well, the only thing I, I would add to that is I don't have a problem, anonymous or not, is that this is city business and everything is public record. Sure, exactly. So if they want to if, dig in and if, find yeah, out. Yeah, even if you even <laughs> if you want it to be anonymous, right. they can simply do a records request right. and you know have the score sheets. The right. gentleman that showed up with the golf carts, they probably would have done a records request if it were anonymous, I would imagine. But you know, it doesn't either way. Such is life. Yeah, such is life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I, I'm okay with it either way. But it is public record. I'm okay with either way. I, with the knowledge that our score sheets are in the public record, like our name and our scores, they belong. I mean, they will be with everything. Yes. Um, and then as far as our discussion and presentation of the stuff that's, you know, the scores up there, having just that 
with just the numbers, I'm fine. I'm I'm indifferent, so I'm fine either way. Whatever the the rest of the committee is comfortable with, I don't think that part changes the process as uh, far as okay. you know. And then I mean, like for us, for our decision making, or no, um, it doesn't. It's just I don't know. No, I know you don't want to be unfairly attacked for maybe a choice that you made. I totally True. get that. Yes. So if that makes you more comfortable and it would make others more comfortable, you know, whoever, you know, this is hopefully this either goes way. on for years. And I'll so do either like, way. It's just, you know, he was, he didn't, he wasn't too happy of hearing what he had to hear. So to not have those confrontations, that's mm -hmm. all I, I would suggest, you know. Mm -hmm. He should have had some golf carts active. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's all. Yeah. Because it's a public meeting. Anybody can come here and hear the results, but... I don't know. Just so then, we still want to have the discussion part. Yeah. Yeah. No. Still have the discussion yes. part and all of that. It's just like when she was up there saying, "All right, you know, Jim, James, you know, mm -hmm. what are your scores?" It's just like, okay, they're knowing these are the scores you gave. Now, you're right. It's public record, but he's going to have to go do all that stuff, right. and not many it's people not are going to do moment. all that. Some people will, not everybody. I just, I agree that I, I do like to have the discussion. I like having the discussion. Before we do our own ratings. Right. No, I so like that. No, I'm still down for all that. It was just like giving our ratings. I just figured, you know, because what if they do show up like mm -hmm. they did and they didn't like what they heard and then it's like, you know, is it going to start an argument or mm -hmm. who knows? I think it's important that to do the discussion before the rating. Right. That it's not your the discussions not to skew other people's votes, but in, instead to maybe give them a different perspective of something that you read that maybe they didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes, you know, if you have someone strong-willed or you know, it's really um, mindset on their way is the only way, then they're going to try to push their agenda, and it could become a problem where people feel. Maybe not in this setting here, but you know, you wouldn't want that to be the case. That's the only thing I would caution us about is making sure that it's it's more of an informative discussion. Hey, this is what I read. This is how it. This is I, this caught my eye, and I really appreciated this, or I didn't like this. That they don't have any. So what if you like you have the scores all submitted? And you still discuss it, and we can each go and say what we think about it. Yeah. But they don't really know what you scored them as. Correct. So we would That's have discussion thing, right? at a regular meeting then. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, sometime between that regular meeting and the special meeting, we would give you our scores. You would tabulate in a spreadsheet, have that there right. with just the numbers. Right. Yep. And then at that special meeting, we would really just come to we can all look talk at the scores, like and then we, we can, you know, chit chat about it and officially say that's the winner that should right. be a five minute right. meeting right and then if there needs to be a vote <laughs> yeah. for a tiebreaker or whatever we can do that at right that there. meeting yeah okay does that work yeah sure that works fine I'm happy with so that. i think really we just sort of changed the <clears> format <throat> of that special meeting right kelsey is that the only thing we've changed that's what it sounds like to me okay yeah. great do we need to like formally do that or is that because i don't think we had a formal thing no, I think all I was looking for here is just while it's fresh, mm -hmm. rather than in eight months. I'm really like, hmm, yeah, what happened? I don't remember. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's fine. I'll note that down, and we can bring that back up maybe in January of next year when we're preparing for this. Okay. And then I guess the only other thing that I was kind of hoping maybe the group could discuss is the specific like scoring criteria. Do we feel that they were appropriate? Does it maybe need to be expanded after seeing and reviewing and actually going through it? I thought it worked for me as far as the information we got back. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know if we explicitly say it, but I, for me, it was very important, not just what they said, but that they actually you know, gave us the information we were asking for. Mm -hmm. And so I just want that to be explicit to the, the person filling out the application that you know, we want all the information, but we also want it 
we want you to follow the instructions. I don't know if that's, I mean, yeah. I, that sounds like very pedantic, but I, I just mean, you know, the, the application itself is part of our scoring process. Like, did you give us the information that we asked for? Did you present it in a way that is, you know, of a high standard? The one, the one thing, uh, did we ever do a character count on any of the applications? Because I remember we limited some. There was a limit, but not a minimum. Because you know, some of the, a few of them were really, really short answers on some of those. Mm -hmm. They didn't, but they, it was one that expanded. Some of them was repeating the answers. Yeah, exactly. It was like the same answer in different questions. It was right. the same yeah. answer, but in different questions some, that were asked. And there was at least one that I noticed that answered a question that was up here. They answered it in another section. That's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I saw. <laughs> You know, they, whoever's need, is doing these needs to read the directions a little better. But again, you know, I, I'm wondering if the if the character count maybe maybe made some people very overly conscious of answering, providing short answers mm -hmm. rather giving a little bit more detail. That's you know, that's one one thing that I might. might maybe you could we could instead of actually. You know, get, does it did it have a max character? We had a max character, max character. on several on several, several so, do so do we want to suggest you know suggested minimum word count? Is that something we want to put in there just to give an idea of like this is this is, these are the kind this is the kind of depth we're looking for in the response as opposed yeah. to one sentence? Or should we give a range? Suggested word count seven hundred to twelve hundred and fifty. Okay. 750 or, to 1250 or, or or even simpler do a page count on the whole application but it's different fields i don't know if that will work some questions might not need as extensive an answer sure right. i agree but we can go through and look at each question and kind of parse that out and say you know this one you you know yeah. you could do a good yeah. job yeah. within and, this and range of that, I, I think in the in the january or february time frame we should dust it off and bring it all out again and say okay and spend a half an hour together or so and just go, okay, do we like that section? Do so is there, we want to change anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there we should probably look at it in December then so we can come to January meeting with our suggestions to change it so then we can officially change it in the January meeting so it's ready to go. There you go. Is there also rules like can the same applicant, you know, submit their same thing every year? That's a great question. We haven't said they yeah. couldn't yet. <laughs> it was the no offense to the golf cart guy, but what if he submits the same thing again and again? Sure. Or, or no offense, what if Miss Rosa sends the same thing? Sure. What is she doing different for 2024 than she did 2023? She has a new class. <laughs> but the new class is the new, new class doing the same yeah. thing. True, I agree. But Are I mean, they going to do something a little bit different than what they did last year? Yeah. They could, they, could, they could submit for the same project, but you know, do the revision of the you know, revision of what the, what they provided. I, I would I, say I would hate to punish a group, any group that continued to do the same project if it were a successful, no, sustainable project and it does it warranted winning. Right. If it were a project that said that it was a just a rock star project and it just it it really made a difference in our community and they win and they win the two years later with the same thing and two years later but with a different class I, I'm okay maybe, with that and maybe a little different wrinkle in what they're doing maybe. and how they're doing it and that sort of and, thing so do we want then to have something in our instructions about if you have applied or won this award you know what our expectations for that application would be yeah I don't know what it that is exactly. It can't be the same exact thing. I mean, you can do some of the similar things, but what are you doing differently from that same activity you did last year? Now, I get, like, the golf cart thing. Like, you know, I mean, if he's in the electrical business, things are evolving every year. There's new batteries. There's new technology. There's new LEDs. It's, you know, you know, different things are using milliamps versus bigger amperage. You know, there's always things that are being coming new and new and new. I don't know how he can change much on that. It's just, you know, hey, I can cut the city's golf cart cost this much. 
forget what his numbers were. I don't know. This is my point of view on it. Okay. Well, I'll mark, I'll mark it down as kind of a thought. Mm-hmm. Maybe come back to it at the December meeting. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I think there's got to be some kind of rule to where they can't just submit the exact same thing, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to remember. Copy and paste their application. I mean, I mean, I guess you know, that's a lot more work on us because then if you like, you get the same applicants, you're going to want to look at the years prior and see if it's the same application submitted again. So, I don't know. it's just my take. Whatever you guys think. <laughs> well, we had we had two that were close, as, as you know, and then two that were not so close. Right. And well, as Kelsey uh, wrote into the uh, to the presentation, we, we we said the following organizations were nominated, and and something to the effect that they're all doing great work. Yeah. No. The, everything that, that was submitted was you know, good. I mean, it's all better, but, but you know. But if it doesn't read well, they're probably going to go, for <laughs> Anyway, that's hard. We'll talk more about it. I would say, I think I agree with you. I would say something we need to sort of get the details of when we yeah. go through the application itself. Or what if we filed the topics on what they can enter? Like, what do we think is sustainable? I know they have their own products that they do all year, but like, you know, you, you do a fishing tournament. Okay, this isn't gonna, go, you're not gonna go try to catch a shark and try to win a tournament. It's a certain type of species that they're looking for. Like, okay, a redfish tournament. Biggest guy who catches the biggest redfish wins. You know, but like you have like topics, all right? Like different categories for this sustainable award. Say, okay, you can do, these different types of things that we want to see for sustainability and whoever does it the best wins. I love that idea. The only, my fear with that is because we have such sort of a small pool here, I don't want to cut anybody out that's potentially doing good work that we haven't thought of yeah. because we didn't write it on the paper. Because we, the five of us didn't think of it. Yeah, okay. Someday, in a, in maybe. A, wonderful world where we have hundreds of applicants make yes that would make sense <laughs> i just don't want is that the most applicants you've ever had this was this the, first the first one. one. Oh, the first one is right here yeah but you i like the scoring questions I, I i thought they were applicable i thought and i i um for the folks that wrote the same answers in multiple blocks they either weren't uh, very good writers or they didn't have enough knowledge about their own project to come up with the correct answer for that question. So, I mean, I like the questions, I like the scoring. I think, I, I thought it worked well. Um, yeah, yeah. Some things I wouldn't change, but I, I don't have a problem with, you know, talking about, I think we should have a discussion next time we go, go to do this. So, uh, Critique it. I think everything can be improved. Well, we got several months to think about it. So. We, do. <laughs> we do. I mark these down, so I'll dig them back up in December. Either way, it was a success. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, and a conversation with Kelsey before the meeting started about publicity that we need to get the word out. That we that's the did this. Yes, publicity. That's yeah, just the community in general, but also um, yeah, that's good. Jim. But also to get more nominations next year. Yeah, for sure. Is it something that we could, like on the city page, post about throughout the year? Just, you know, kind of keep it top of mind to say, you know, just think about, you know, you know, I don't know. We're, we celebrated the first sustainability community sustainability award. You know, we're always looking for new applicants. Uh, you know, keep it in mind. The application will open in when do we open it? February. Just to kind of, you know, so it's on people's radar, and if they miss, if they happen to miss it in January or February when it's posted, you know, they saw it in in June or August or whatever. So, 
the award she got. Did she get her trophy or whatever, or her plaque? Yes. And that's all they got? It was just a recognition of winning? There's so going to be a perpetual plaque that's made. But yeah, that's all the winners will be on it. it. So if you want to get more people to enter, do a thousand dollar prize. A thousand bucks. Taxpayer money. I mean, you, you run a fundraiser or at the Friday Fest or whatever, donate to the, you know, sustainability award. And then you and then you advertise, hey, if you win, you win 500 bucks, a thousand like, bucks. I don't know if it's a violation of like any city government ruling law to give people money. Who's our lawyer? That I can ask her, but I have never ever seen a, a local government give a cash prize. It's time for change. <laughs> <laughs> I can look into it, but I, I mean, think about it. If you could win a thousand bucks, hell, I'll write this and do something on the side to maybe win a thousand bucks. Well, you get a lot more applicants. I'd be scared of those people at that meeting. <laughs> That's why it's anonymous. Yeah, it's just okay, I'll write it down, but we're gonna definitely need to. I'm just, I'm that. just throwing an idea out. You want more people to get involved? I'm. I'm Tour of the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a great tour. that's a good tour. I've yeah. done that. Did that in Roosevelt. Well, yeah, there, there, there might be a way around that is to have somebody or their sponsor of the award, somebody outside the city government. Or, or what if you just went around to the local businesses here that's in town right. and say, hey, for sustainability, well, you know, we'll more. recognize you as a sponsor. Can you give us a gift card for your establishment? Twenty dollars here, twenty dollars there, and then they get a gift that's card right. basket. Instead of cash, I don't know. Ron Johns. I mean, they're right on the beach. Why wouldn't they want to? Anyway. So, Kelsey, can you find out if we're allowed to do that? Yes. Okay. I mean, I got the f police always calling me. Will you donate to the police? It's like you've got city taxes. What do you need my money for? There you go. All right. All right, so we have a good list going. Any other changes, updates, suggestions that we can think of at the moment? Okay, um, so Kelsey, we have that on then for December to reevaluate. All right, excellent. So then moving on to the sustainability plan update. Kelsey sent us examples from Cape Canaveral, Satellite Beach, and Stewart, um, what their sustainability plans look like, what kinds of things they have in theirs. That was in our email. And so I, I know I just sent these to you today, and I'm really sorry that I did not get them to you sooner. So I did not expect you to read 400 pages <laughs> for this meeting. But, um, oh, no, you tell me. <laughs> you didn't check the email? But just one thing that I kind of wanted to point out is um, there, th these sustainability plans that I sent you examples of from our surrounding cities, they're more of like um, kind of a narrative. Does that make sense? Instead of just um, ours is a great kind of bulleted list of here's the things we're going to do. But I think those ones explain a little bit more, here's how this is going to be impactful to, to the community. And I... I really like using these types of examples as a model, maybe as we go forward to think about what we might be able to do. Okay. So the narrative element is... Yeah, because that's a your... document you know, that somebody can pick up and read and they can say, oh, I understand what the city of Cape Canaveral is going to do. Um, and why. Maybe if yeah. you look at a bulleted list, you'd be like, this is what Cocoa Beach is going to do, but I don't know how it, it will be so impactful. Right. Do you think um, we should go through and redline these individually and uh, uh, compose all of our thoughts or should do you, is our sustainability um, uh, well it is available electronically is it a PDF or a word yeah ours is just um it's a PDF of there's a PowerPoint and then just like a PDF of what I gave you guys That's so it more can't like be the... redlined unless you have uh, Adobe Pro you can print it out and get the red pen out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> scan it in. Sure yeah. Can. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, great idea, Jill. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can. I think that's a. I think that would be a great approach. Um, I started breezing through those. That's a lot of. A lot of information. Well, what, one thing I noticed on, on one of the three, 
or maybe more, but at least on one of the three, it said, it started out by saying, this is, it's been five years, so we need to, this is our update. And ours was done in 2018, it's now 2023, so probably ought to really take a good hard look at ours mm -hmm. in the next few months and decide what we want to do. And this gets, this, these, these really get down into details on what's going to be done where and how and who and all that sort of stuff where ours is not quite as, not quite right. as detailed. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I meant more for the point of view was uh, uh, maybe there's some things in the last five years that have come up that we didn't include in 2018 that sure. you might want to go, Absolutely. yeah, you know, we should, we should, we should have a, something to do with item A. And, you know, to create cohesiveness, you know, Satellite Beach and Cape Canaveral are our neighbors. So if there are things that they are very strongly going for in their plan, maybe these are things that we need to consider if we're not already considering. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I have one also from some point in the past where you sent us, which was Titusville. When was oh, that? Oh, I forgot about Titusville. Oh, um, I'll send you guys that one too. You have it, because you, you must have sent it to me. Yeah, I forgot about that. Kelsey, talking about how... Um, uh, those those plans and how much information's in them. One of the things that and I, that called me, draw me, drew me to this page. One of the things that I liked about our sustainability guiding principles is keep the plan simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, sometimes if you overcomplicate things, you know, yeah. you know, I just sometimes it's simple is better. Sometimes. I think details, uh, I'm a detail guy. So when you have a, a, a bullet that you think we should expand on and uh, put uh, sub headings in underneath the bullet, great. I, but I think if we try to overthink this and, com and compare the, ourselves to other cities, we may lose who we are and what we think we need to be doing, not necessarily what they're doing. I know that they have things that are working for them uh, and I would have no problem, you know, including those in our plan, but I don't think we need a 50, 75 page plan. I think it would be, um, I read a lot of documents <laughs> and sometimes it's, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's sleepy time. <laughs> you know, just a waste of words. <laughs> and we don't want our plan to be a waste of words. So I think it, I think we should set the bar, and they would want to model their plan after Cocoa right. Beaches. That's what I would want. Well, again, what you have in front of you is a bulleted list. Yeah, it and is. What they what they've done is taken the bulleted list. They and have expanded, expanded on it. Yeah, and, and Titus still looks the same. It's, it's, yes, it's you know hundred. And and it's not a bad thing. You know, pages. that's maybe a secondary document that goes into detail on the on the specific bullets. Maybe so. That's actually a good point. Well, you know, you talk about beach dunes, support sea turtles, shorebirds, storm protection, recent re revitalization from past impacts. I think it's important to discuss what we've done for the uh, yeah. the, the seagrasses and the birds and the, the turtles and the, uh, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I think, uh, and the continued efforts that Cocoa Beach wants to the effort, effort we want to apply in that area um, as a sustainability committee. But again, I think I'd like for Cocoa Beach, I would want people to model our plan. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would be willing to put in a lot of time and effort reviewing those, redlining them, and, and, and I would value all of your input as well. I think that's a good way to, 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 Redesign, you might say, our plan. Okay. Kelsey, you had mentioned that it might be possible for you to send us the things that you would suggest would be most vital to update or revise. Yeah. I know. I can still do that. Okay. Next month, maybe. Okay. It's less busy. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. Sure. Okay. It's quite all right. Because you're in it every day, so I, I would like to know what your priorities are from your point of view. Yes, absolutely. That's important. Yeah. I will get that to you guys. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. No, that's all right. Thank you. No. 
Okay, so then our plan going forward. So we have these um, these plans, and Kelsey, can you send us the Titusville one when you yes. get a chance as well? Do you guys want printouts of these, or can you mark it up electronically? What would you prefer? I'm just gonna. I can I can use Adobe Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because they're. I'm good off. with what I have. Yeah. Okay, so no printouts. No. Awesome. Yeah. I'm fine. Save the paper. So yeah, if you could send us Titusville, um, and then so for the next meeting we will come with let's say what we like about these plans and and believe that we should perhaps work on implementing in ours and what would that look like and we'll start there. Yeah. So kind of a comparison to say what what's good here that we would like to to do for us. Does that, make, does that sound good to everyone else? Mm -hmm. Good plan? I like it. All right, so that will be discussed at the next meeting. So review and submit. Any other comments about that before we move on? All right, then we'll move on to sustainability events and outreach. Discussing partnerships and future events and what that schedule would be. Okay, I can kind of, I guess maybe we should put those in the opposite order. So for future events, um, a couple things that we have coming up. So I don't have dates locked in yet, but we're working with the MRC to schedule a program with them to bring their some type of discussion about the progress report, mm -hmm. if that's what you guys asked for. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working with them to do that. They'll also be going to schools and doing some school programs. Um, so we're trying to put them in some classrooms to help them do that. We don't have that locked in yet. But that'll probably be in the fall until we're back in session. Um, and then I actually had um, the group of Cocoa Beach hotel managers, whatever that group is, um, reach out to see if we could provide a sea turtle lighting presentation to them. So I figured that would be a fantastic platform, kind of something different rather than just hosting a little community thing where five people show up. We'll have all the eyes and ears of those hotel managers. So we're working with the Sea Turtle Conservancy to do um, a virtual session for that group. I don't know when that's going to be yet, um, but we'll get that locked in. But that would be virtual? Yes, um, the Sea Turtle Conservancy, they are in Gainesville, so they can't travel here unless they have funding to do that, and they don't have funding for this type of... How, how, how did they get, when we had their presentation, how did they... Um, I think they had, so they had um, a code enforcement workshop in Brevard County yeah, yeah. that same day, yes. so they were able just to kind of stay. Oh, I see, and do okay. It, yeah, because they, you know, it's quite a ways away. So do you recommend we send out like a, a scar? Go ahead, sorry. Oh. The one, thing, the one thing I could say, I know Surf Rogers and because the Ocean Friendly Restaurants program that they have, that they are trying to work with Kelly, with Kelly Lonicky to, to put together something rather with restaurants, and maybe we need to pay, piggyback on that too. Chris did try to reach out to me. I need to give her a call back. Pardon? Surf Rider. Chris yep. tried to reach out to me. I need to give her a call back about that. Yep. So okay. That may be something too. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, yes. Restaurants are equally. <laughs> So we send out a, do you, is this facilitated by a Teams meeting, you invite, you send out an invite to all your hotels and then they RSVP and you know who's attending online? So they have, like from what I understand, from what I'm hearing from the hotel manager I've been communicating with, they have a monthly or a quarterly meeting yeah. and we would just bring the Sea Turtle Conservancy to their meeting okay. to provide a presentation. They do an in-person thing. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so that I don't have to get people together. They're already together. Okay. And we'll just yeah. go to them. Perfect. I love yes. that. Okay. It's, what Thanks. is the organization called? Hotel? I don't remember. It's something about Cocoa Beach Hotel Managers. Okay. I don't remember what okay. their group is called. Okay. But I didn't even know it existed, so I'm really glad they reached out. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you know how many hotels are in, the, in this uh, community? Of this? I don't know. A okay. lot. A lot? Yeah. <laughs> wow, we definitely want to reach yeah. out to them. I'll let you guys know more information when we have that locked in. Okay. Um, okay. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. Well. And then a couple of other programs. Um, I know this group has kind of talked in the past about like going to different types of groups. So thinking about doing the public presentation with the MRC, going to the hotel managers group with the Sea Turtle Conservancy. And yesterday, the National Estuary Program reached out to me asking if they could come speak at our commission meeting and to tell them about the One Lagoon program. So um, I'll be trying to work with our city manager to line that up. So that's another presentation. And then we always have Friday Fest. 
probably not every Friday Fest. Um, so I wanted to get your guys' interest or thoughts on what groups you would like to see at possibly maybe a Friday Fest every quarter. Another, another thing that might interest us is there's a condo group, condominium group for Space Coast at large, I believe, that uh, it's not specifically Cocoa Beach, it's in the, throughout, the, throughout the county. And how, well, I know a couple of years ago I had a contact for them, but I probably has changed since then. But I, I would suspect that if you go, Jim, you may know more about this than I do. Or, but I've heard rumors of Bob, but that's all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm, I, I know I've heard from others that there's some sort of group that meets that, you know, talks about various issues and has contact with the various condos, which, of course, we have plenty of here. Well, I can I can call our we have a management company. Yeah, I'll call them. And see what yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the management groups had some sort of a. They, they may. <clears throat> some sort of thing. Because again, we can talk about any everything from lawn care to you know parking lot lighting to all sorts of things. Would the chamber of commerce have anything to do? Maybe. Would they know? Maybe chamber might know. That might be another another group to talk to would be the Chamber of Commerce. And of course, of course, that's going to come back on us that we don't want to sit. We, we, we want to you know, give give Kelsey all this to keep her busy because I'm sure she has more than enough to do with this. Now point, let's not so. get too carried away. <laughs> <laughs> Any case, do you call this time? <laughs> <laughs> He's on the clock. Lord, I had more comp time. We were capped, and I'm gonna. I, yeah. My comp time is always 100%. And I don't want to rush you guys, but I have a sea turtle lighting inspection at 8 p.m. Okay. Okay. So partnerships. Does anyone have any ideas for any organizations we'd like to see at Friday Fest? Just trying to think what would be MRC to staff the table. The problem with MRC right now is they they've got had some awful attrition and there's not not nearly they've lost about half their staff oh, wow. to a natural yeah. crazy. So, but but they I've, I've volunteered from for them before to staff a table for MRC and yeah. various things. So I think they could get volunteers to do it because they always have good information. Well, we did Surf Rider a couple months ago. There's always sea turtle preservation. There's KBB, probably. K yeah, Keeper of Art Beautiful. There are probably a few others that I'm not thinking of, too. <clears throat> okay. I think that's enough to start with. Um, we actually have a contract with MRC for them to do a certain number of outreach events for us. So we can use this mm. as one of those for them to meet their contract requirement with us. And then I can reach out to the Sea Turtle Preservation Society and have them come out maybe soon because it's sea turtle season. I think it'd be an appropriate time. Yeah, great. Okay. Okay. All right, then we will move on to new business, which there is nothing on the agenda. So we will then move on to committee member announcements. Does any committee member have an announcement they'd like to make? Well, I'm, I'm going on my annual safari to, to New England this summer, so. I may not be here next month. I probably, I'm certainly, I probably will not be here July, August, and maybe September. I will try and get in remotely. Kelsey's been fine to get me in that way, and that's, it's, it's not it's easy. It's not the greatest working remotely, but it, it uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I can participate that way any, as best I can. So, well, I'll be, th I'll be thinking of you when the water, when the temperatures up there in the 70s and the 90s here. So. <laughs> I have a couple of quick things just for future agenda. This is a, a letter to the editor of Florida Today from uh, the 23rd of April. Thank you. This woman in Melbourne wrote in about how wonderful cigarette bar butts are on the beach. Thank you. And I thought she did a really eloquent job because she not only spoke about, you know, just because it's trash, but some details about the environmental impacts, which I never really considered in detail. So the point of me giving this out is to simply to ask him to put it on the agenda, discuss it again, because I know that, yeah. that some members of the commission would be in favor of a ban of smoking on the beach, and it's been done elsewhere successfully. So, I, 
if I recall at the last meeting, the kind of the, the meeting that was that was talked about, there was some discussion about future consideration. Is there any has anybody done anything with that, or is it just? I have to be brought to them. Again. Yeah, I, nobody's brought it to them. Yeah. That, that's yeah. why I'm, All right. I'm suggesting we discuss whether or not we would yeah. like to bring it. Because that last time it was kind of confusing about who brought it and why yeah. and that sort of right. thing. So. Can we put that on for new business for next meeting? Yes. And the second thing I have real quickly is that I would still like us to go take a tour of the waste management uh, facility. Oh, the Murph? Recycling facility, the Murph, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really that, cool. That's cool. I, are they still doing tours? I they, don't know. I don't know. I know it, it, it was. It's been a while since I asked her about yeah. that. Okay. And it's. Uh, it, I know it, at the time I went that they was they were very limited on that because there's a lot of moving parts mm -hmm. over there. Have you been, Jim, or no? No, I have not. Okay. Back when we were doing monthly events, the the uh, presentation that Waste Manager did on recycling was one of the better ones we had. Yeah. Well attended and very interesting. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other announcements? Good. All right, there is no public present, so there will be no public comment this evening, so we will adjourn.